Live from Cape Town, this is the voice of the Cape. The voice of the Cape. With the local government elections just weeks away, political campaigning in the Western Cape is intensifying as politicians vie for votes. Amid growing public frustration with the current political light landscape, this election is expected to be a hotly contested one. In the build-up to the elections, Voice of the Cape hosted a public debate with the main contenders in the province, with candidates for the ANC, DA, EFF, COPE, ICOSA, DI and Al Jamar parties being represented. The debate was hosted in partnership with Radio Islam and ITV and was broadcast live on their respective platforms from the Islamia Auditorium in Lansdowne on Wednesday 27 July 2016. Party representatives were challenged on key issues such as their party manifestos, service delivery, corruption, inequality and the socio-economic conditions relevant to the Western Cape. Live audience in attendance was also allowed to pose questions directly to the party representatives. Here are some of the highlights from this event. Right. Assalamu alaikum, everybody, and uh, welcome to the Great Cape Debate. Um, as has been said, my name is Shafiq Morton, and I'll be facilitating the second half of the Great Cape Debate. I think that in terms of the Constitution, it is, of course, a Constitution which is based on a, a constitutional democracy, which means we follow the Constitution. Secondly, it is a representative democracy where our political parties are representing people's interests. And thirdly, it's a participative democracy where communities can interact regarding all decisions of government. So the issue there is that they, uh, the, the community has the right to, to of course, criticize and to object to any developments taking place within their areas. Due process must be followed, and of course, uh, the matter um, must be then uh, debated on its merit, and then some decision is made. I know all decisions are not always in favor of particular communities, and of course, the communities has the right then to resort to the courts to also pronounce on these matters. So that is why we have a South Africa based on a democracy with different three arms of government, which means there's an independent judiciary, there's the uh, parliament itself, which is the legislature, and we have the government, which is the executive that executes uh, actually the parties and manifesto and policies. Thank you. <laughs> the truth is uh, not an enemy of Jeremiah. The ANC is very clear that we have challenges. We have serious challenges about leadership. We have serious challenges about strength of the organization. Oh my gosh. We are clear about that. <laughs> that does not mean that we do not know what the needs of our communities are. We understand our responsibility when we govern the city on the, after the 3rd of August <laughs> is to deliver service to our community. If it so happens that the voters again decide otherwise, we will continue to expose the corruption that's happening in the DA, the lack of service delivery that the DA is doing to our people, the gentrification that he can't answer, because the reality is that people are being evicted out of Woodstock and Salt River, out of the wild rise, yes. where people have lived for years. Yes. They read yes. in the newspapers that the houses are for sale. That's what we will be taking up. We will be exposing the maintenance scope issue where the DA's mayor go and meet with developers, even up. before the city have taken a decision to sell the land. We will expose the fact that the DA is prepared to allow development in you know, since the horticultural area in Philippi. <coughs> in the PSA. That's our responsibility. We will expose those kind of things. We are clear. I... Leadership is organizational. But when it comes to governance, we, we know that we are part of South Africa. We have a national government run by the ANC. We have provincial governments in the other provinces except in the Western Cape. So we know our responsibility. <laughs> well, first of all, we will do what the ANC won't do. That's be responsible, accountable opposition. Too often, you sit in sub-council meetings, you sit in council meetings, and you hear the sound of staplers being taken loose in a briefing pack. That only means that these guys have not read what they're supposed to read. They have not engaged with the material that they're supposed to engage with. That means that the people aren't really being represented. Our councils will be available 24 hours a day, six days a week. That is a commitment. 
Uh, people are going to remember that. No, that's, that's the point. You must remember that. That's the thing about having a clean slate, is that you have to uh, be, you have to keep your promises. Now the DA have made promises and they've broken. The ANC have made promises and they've broken. Um, the the um, the burden of a clean slate and the responsibility of a clean slate is the exact same thing. Now we have a track record of holding the highest executive to account. We will do that in every single ward, in every single sub council that we win power. Um, look, COP is a small party, but it hasn't disappeared despite all its many many problems. Um, we, we, we are reassured by that. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and it's still around. So it's still it's still. Uh, kicking and fighting and I think it's important that it does that because I think from what we see especially from lessons from abroad that you do need smaller parties that do bring a different voice and a different angle to politics um, else you would have a situation where we have in the United States at present where you have someone like Donald Trump who climbs to leadership positions because of this sort of two party system um, these mammoth parties that don't make spaces for other voices and so I think that it's important that COPE still sticks around and other smaller parties because I do think they bring different voices and contrib different contributions to the political spectrum. Let's talk about Slavic militancy. This uh, peddling of uh, disgusting information also reached our national security and they invited me to a conference in Potistro where there is a rise in Muslim extremism. And at that particular conference, Alhamdulillah, we managed to rebut the terminology of Muslim extremism and Islamic and militancy. There is no such thing as Islamic militancy in Islam. and it is time that people of the media to stop this bloody nonsense. Sorry for the rude word. There is no such thing as, as Islamic militancy. There is no such thing as Muslim extremism. And so our state security forces, they know that there is no such term and there is no rise in Islamic uh, extremism. The Muslim community is the most peaceful community in the country. But coming back to us, get to a rising the, the Muslim community. The constitution which you hold, which you claim to hold so dear, the foundational principles is a multi-party democracy where all communities are encouraged to play their role uh, to bring about the transformation that we need. And we have this, we, we, we spend millions of dollars to develop, for example, <coughs> an Islamicity index to identify how countries practice the principles and policies of Islam. And uh, true to form we find that uh, none of the Muslim countries score well on these on these index uh, on this uh, on these indices. Whereas countries like Denmark and Sweden, New Zealand, Norway, and, and New Zealand, uh, they are more Islamic than many of the Muslim countries. In South Africa, we are around about the 60s, and that's why we need a part like Al Jamaat to push us up so that we can be in the top 10. Uh, as far as uh, uh, practicing Islamic policies. So I don't make any apologies that we are trying to build a strong Muslim party. I hope you put that question to all the other parties uh, that uh, use political parties uh, to express the, the principles of the faith. But the journalists, especially in the Muslim community, always pick on the Muslim parties. And that is disgusting. And I hope I'm not going to hear that question again. Thank you very much, uh, Shafiq, for, the, for that question. Because uh, that's exactly what we came to, to tell you. Because I think we're the only party that's actually putting a plan in place instead of talking all these high English words here, which is confusing me. So, very simply put, is the DI, Democratic Independent Party, the divine intervention, it is a tsunami that is coming, and that tsunami is the DI. So, 
you know, with the rhetoric that is going on and the slandering that will go on between all these parties, because they have no clear path. And this is the DI's uh, path for you. Come the 4th of August, you could possibly see the first Muslim mayor of Cape Town like you've seen in London, and that would be Mr. Anwar Adams. So this is how it actually goes. We all know that people sleeping on the streets are on the increase. What the DI will be doing is removing people from the streets and placing them into rehabilitation centers. For children, for females, and for men and families. And not just try and place them back with their families, but to rehabilitate them, identify their education, identify their skills, and then basically rehabilitate them, employ back into society. And that is what is needed where we create, reduce Reduce the drug intake, reduce the crime, because currently people think if there's a car breaking or a house breaking, that there's people on the street. And it's these people that have fallen on hard times that basically cannot support themselves, but yet we have a budget of 40 billion that is not basically uplifting these people. And this is empowering our people, the poorest of the poor. Then we would go into the informal settlements and we look at what is not happening in the informal settlements. We will immediately clean up the informal settlements daily, and Mr. Min won't even get a cleaner. So basically, Hold on, hold on, hold on. We're talking about we're talking about immediate relief for these people. Short-term goals, because we want to eradicate the informal settlements and build them decent, dignified, affordable homes which they do not have. It's easy for you to talk, but I think what we should do is visit the informal settlements and see what is not being done. I think with all the drama in Kanalan, it is very important that we need to start concentrating on the metro. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not just the metro leader, I'm also working out until today. I'm still working in the city of Cape Town in the IDP office, which means that my knowledge around local government is broad enough to understand what's happening within local government. But you mean plan? Mo particularly planning. Most of our, our councillors that sit in council today has been trained by myself. So, to do it different within the city of Cape Town, the first thing that we want to do is to reprioritize the budget for where it is needed most. I've earlier spoken about marginalized communities. There's a number of marginalized communities in the city of Cape Town. And we're saying that we cannot continue spending the city's budget in the affluent areas. We need to spend the monies on the Cape Flats. We need to spend the monies in the informal settlements. We need to spend the monies in your Maddenbergs, Hanover Parks, yes, Google Lakes, yes. uh, Ocean Views, where it is needed most. Because it's in that area where we have service delivery uprising, service delivery boycotts, and it's not because of service delivery. It happens because councillors are absent. Yeah. Yeah. Councillors are disrespecting the very community that yeah. voted yeah. for them. We watch the space, we will give you a counselor that's from your community, that understands your need, that speak your language, that understands your culture, yes, yes. and seriously prioritize your need with regards to consult with the government. That is what I'm My question is going to the, to the gentleman in the hot seat tonight, the DA. <laughs> it's a very, very simple question, and I think it's a national question. Uh, but it's impacting the city of Cape Town as well. And my question is, when are you going to be honest to the people that Helen Zeller didn't really leave the DA, and that they are using Mushi Maimani to gain the black votes, and that they are fooling the people of South Africa? When are you going to tell the people the truth? I want the listeners to know that they are being fooled with Mushi being the leader. It's all planned. And that's why Mrs. Masubuko, Lindue, left South Africa. Yes. Yes. People must investigate that because they wanted her to take the take that lead yes. and then she didn't want it because it's unethical. I want to tell Mr. D.A. for Sheikh Isel. I was staying in Poverty State for eight years and I was fighting with a D.A. counselor for eight years. Nothing was done in Poverty State and I can tell Mr. Isel that Nothing is still done in Parkwood. Mm. Uh -huh. There's nothing done. If you go in, you can see how the place looks pathetic. Mm. That the, the councillor never come out to come see how the people is going on, what is going on, and fight with them. We call it the illegitimate state of Israel. And we know for a fact that the DA receives money from the illegitimate state. And that is blood money. My question to you is, 
how do you sleep? The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, a Muslim who is not concerned about the affairs of another Muslim is not a Muslim. <coughs> That's hadith. Now my question to you is, how do you sleep knowing that the state of Israel is an illegitimate state and they are killing and maiming innocent women and children and you have the audacity to ask Muslims, that is not Muslim fight, it's a humanitarian cause and you're asking Muslim people in, 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 in South Africa to vote for your party. Uh, Jeremiah, the ANC, and maybe at the end each one can answer to say what they can do pertaining to this issue. Um, we have, in, in Mitchell Spain, we have numerous murders. I think with the highest crime area in, in the whole of Western Cape. Every day we had them four or five murders. Right? Now, I want to ask if you want the vote of the communities, why is it you have stopped the national, the sets belong to national, have stopped that the army should be deployed in the Cape Plates areas because Mendenburg is going on, Hanover Park is going on, all the areas where murders are taking place. Not once you people, because chefs always say, no, they don't have enough people. But we are saying, bring in the army and help assist to prevent these things. But no, you're not doing it. What you're also doing is, you are, if you look at the informal settlement, we will find that Mitchell Spain at this particular moment are held and ransomed by your people that are protesting, burning the air, our people cannot come out of Mitchell's Plain yeah. or any other part yeah. because your people, you, have used, you, yeah. you put them there yeah. strategically so that they can interrupt our, our life. Okay. Um, I want to know in terms of the budget that you that you're claiming the 67 percent spent in our poor areas how have that added value to our people I want to take you to one program of the city of Cape Town the street people's program which we all know the millions of rands allocated to that program is to appease the white voters and the affluent people because to them street people is just a nuisance in the areas how have that how have that millions of rands benefited those people because daily we hear that there's an increase of people going migrating to the streets okay. um so really um it's, it's abhorrent how you can sit there and claim that you are for our people thank you Live from Cape Town, this is the Voice of the Cape. The Voice of the Cape.